looking for a great YouTube network to join, apply for full screen with the link in the description. To trade your games in for a better value, use leaptrade.com and use Broken Games HD as a referral. All right, what's going on, everybody? So, going to give you all my day three experience of E3. It's really day two because E3 officially started yesterday, but I did the, you know, I got here on Sunday and did a pre E3 video. So, yeah, I'm going to talk to you about everything I experienced today. This should be a shorter video than the one I did yesterday. Um, you know, not going to talk as much. Um, so today marked the first day where you can actually be on the showroom floor and play the games that are actually playable and the games that are not playable. They usually have some like demo showcases that reveal some more gameplay that might not have been shown at the actual press conferences. So first thing, um, I had a, uh, interview with um, Rocket League's one of the Rocket League developers, Jeremy Dunham, which I will be uploading at a later time. Um, before I get into that detail, let me just give you some more advice. If you make it ever make it to E3, the showroom floor dates, you know, which are today, tomorrow, and Thursday, you will be doing a lot of walking, a lot of standing, a lot of waiting online, and you got to be patient. So let me tell you that it was a little bit. It, it's really crowded, extremely packed. It can even be frustrating sometimes, you know, coming and, and I live in a city, grew up in New York all my life. You know, you play people Tetris, you shuffle through people, you know, you, you pretty much your whole life living in any city. And it, it was still frustrating for me the, how packed and how annoying it was to be constantly shuffling and playing people Tetris in the L.A. You know, uh, convention center. It's it can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes right so you got to be, be prepared for that like I said you got to be prepared to be standing walking a lot and waiting online so don't be try don't try to be fly out there wearing some brand new Jordans you ain't break in yet yeah that's not gonna work out too well for you your feet gonna be hurting um also with uh, you know when you when you get accepted to E3 you get some invitations from usually smaller time developers uh, you know, not really the, the huge, the huge, uh, studios. You get some invitations from smaller studios, um, to, uh, this, for them to showcase their game to you or their product. And the, the thing I learned today is don't make any schedule, don't, don't schedule any appointments unless it's like one of those developers you really want to meet because you're not going to have time. See, I, I, I can't remember exactly what time the showroom floor hours are, but it's like, I think they open like at 11, it's like 11 to 6 or something like that, something like that. But regardless, even if it's a little bit long, a wider time than that, you would be, you would be amazed at how time flies from obviously waiting in line, walking around, trying to find the, the games you want to play, and then when you actually play the game, you know... An hour can easily pass and that's just waiting for like maybe one game moving on to the second one today I think you know I got there I got there at like a like 12 I left like at 630 I only played about six games no lie and I'm gonna be uploading the footage of all of that only played about six games my dude because like I said all of that that I stated is included in that process I only played about six games I'm going to try to get in, you know, get in a lot more games tomorrow and the day after. So you really got to maximize it. So you're not going to have time to be doing a whole bunch of interviews um, with uh, all these developers while also trying to play all these games and get all this footage. So that's why I think that's why a lot of people, you know, bring cr bigger crews with them because you need a lot of people to do a lot of different things. So me, you know, mainly being... Uh, you know, one person can't play all these games and do all these damn interviews, you know, just in their learning experience. That's just how it works. Um, but what I did play, like I said, I did the interview with Rocket League's Jeremy Dunham. Uh, real cool dude. You know, good interview. Um, play a little bit of Rocket League. And I was in a PlayStation uh, booth today. You know, I just thought thought it would be more organized, um, you know, since I had to do with the, in the interview with them first and they were there. I'm like, okay, I'm going to focus on the PlayStation games, trying to play the PlayStation games and get footage of these games today, 
the Microsoft booth, the Xbox booth is like right across from them. So I'm, I'm like, cool, I'm going to go to the Xbox booth tomorrow. And that's the plan. But today I played uh, God of War 3 Remastered. It's in 60 frames. It's, it's 1080p. It's gorgeous. I played Kill Strain, that game from uh, San, Sony San Diego. Uh, which, you know, I was very skeptical about because I watched like their Twitch videos and videos they've uh, done on it promoting the game. And I didn't really think much of it. I'm like, oh, it looks pretty, honestly, I thought it looked pretty crappy. And I played it and I'm like, this is, this is a pretty fun game. This is pretty good. Um, it, I do feel like the visuals could be much better. I feel like they can do much more with the visuals. But I think because that team obviously handles uh, MLB, the MLB, the show game every year, you know, I, I assume it's only part of, of that development team that's, that's even working on this, not the whole team. Um, I played Drawn to Death, the game uh, David Jaffe, you know, made by David Jaffe. It's, uh, it's, it's exclusive to PlayStation 4. I think it might be on PC also, though. Um, and that's, that game is actually free to play. I didn't know that, but one of the guys at the booth told me uh, Drawn to Death is actually a free-to-play game. Um, that game is surprisingly fun. I was skeptical about that too. It's uh, you know, but Drawn to Death is de is definitely fun. Wild, crazy, third-person shooter, um, crazy imagination from David Jaffe. Um, I played Until Dawn. Uh, it was pretty underwhelming. I gotta say, I can't say that playing the demo made me any more excited for the game that I was. It was like. It, it 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 wasn't very scary, and it, it's hard to be for one thing. It's hard to be scared when you're in a this this uh, this auditorium with like uh, so many, hundreds and hundreds of other people, you know. So the atmosphere isn't there, so it doesn't really fit. But I can't say you know even the gameplay uh, exci excited me for for this game at all. And I liked you know those type of playable interactive game movie things, but I can't say Until Dawn excited me. Um, Damn, what else did I play? I, I played Ratchet and Clank. Um, Y'all know I'm not a Ratchet... You know, I made it clear. I'm not a big Ratchet and Clank fan. Uh, you know, I, I've honestly found all of the past Ratchet and Clanks boring. The game looks visually very impressive. Looks visually very impressive. The gameplay is... It's solid. You know, it's it's similar to how the other Ratchet and Clanks have been. You know, so so Ratchet and Clank is not a, it's not a bad game. I just don't find it fun. The gameplay has always been solid, but the formula is not fun to me. It, it's it's just dull to me. Um, no, I didn't get to all the new, the newer games are not really playable. The games that are farther along um, from being released are not playable. Like Uncharted Four, not playable. Horizon, not playable. Uh, Last Guardian, not playable. But you can see like extended, I think demos of them or something like that. But those games are not playable. And I think the Xbox the Xbox games. The Xbox side actually has less playable exclusives because most of those Xbox games are farther off from being released. I think, you know, Halo Guardians, I believe they had a booth for that. Gears Ultimate Edition, I think they had a booth for that. But Tomb Raider, no, definitely not. And, uh, yeah, I think every, I think that was it. Um, so, and, and the other things they had there were like kind of like multi-plats. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting something from the Sony booth. What else did I play? Kill Strain, Until Dawn, Ratchet and Clank, uh, Rocket League, um, God of War Remastered, Drawn to Death. I actually, I think, I think that that is it that I, I played. Um, so yeah, those those were good experiences. I'm gonna be uploading uploading that footage. Um, on the channel eventually is a lot to talk about a lot of content I still um, still haven't gotten around to a lot of topic videos that I need that I need to make you know news updates and everything like that don't know when I'm gonna get to get, up, get you know get to do that uh, still got to review all the press conferences I still haven't watched any of the press conferences except the one I've been through so I have no idea what's going on none it's just really busy so, yeah, those are the games I played so far. They were pretty good. I enjoyed them. Um, oh, and Battleborn. Battleborn is... I played Battleborn, and it's really like a Destiny-type, Borderlands-type type of game. Um, and y'all know I despise uh, Destiny. Love Borderlands. Despise Destiny. And it was... I didn't know it was so, it was so similar. 
Now, the reason I despise Destiny is not because of its like single player, you know, type of co-op thing. Um, it, it was because the multiplayer, the multiplayer was so trash and unbalanced and garbage. And um, we didn't, there was, we didn't play a multiplayer. We played a co-op mission. It was four, it was a, a four-player co-op mission. So I played with three other people, and you know, it seemed to be more objective-based than Destiny. It wasn't just oh, shoot and kill every single enemy. It was actually, it d did seem to be more objective-based, so that was a little bit better. And these characters are unique. They have, you know, it's very similar to Destiny. They have two abilities, um, and they have a special, they, yeah, they had two abilities. They had a special move uh, with cooldown timers, and uh, yeah, and it was very crazy. A lot of stuff going on on screen, different, type, different types of characters, your melee characters, your range characters, um, Y'all know the whole gist of how that goes with these type of uh, mixed genre RPGs. You know these. Uh, y you know, y'all know y'all know how that goes. So it's I was surprised it was that similar to it. But yeah, um, that's it, y'all. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get on out of here now, and uh, yeah, more videos coming tomorrow. All right, peace.